Hey, what's up, Moto Buddies? This is Mike from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours, and we are working on a 2020 KTM 500 EXCF, and I have in my hand a removed throttle body. This is the throttle body off the bike. You can see here that we've taken it out. It's completely missing because we've been doing some testing, and we're going to make some, uh, some videos, a video series here about the throttle body, fuel injection system, fuel pump, fuel management system on these bikes and so here for display we've got the complete throttle body and I've got another video that um, is going to be a real thorough breakdown of this but let me just give you a quick sort of overview of what we're looking at here so with this unit the throttle cables so if we had a carburetor um, we'd have a push and a pull on the throttle cables and that's what we have here those two go in here and then we've got our um, you know our cam notice on this one. It's not perfectly round. It's eccentric and so that's interesting to note um, A couple of things also we've got a red knob and a yellow knob now the yellow knob is the fast idle knob and what happens is, is you push that in and it cracks open the butterfly to a point that allows more air in and If you can see that it might be difficult, but basically when I push that button in and out so that's out. So this would be, ch it's not choke, it's just, it's, it allows more air in. It's just like with your hand, you're cracking open the throttle just by like a small finite amount. And so when I push that button in, it opens up the throttle plate and it just allows more air in. Simple as that. And then when I release, when I go backwards on the, the throttle, uh, the cable pushes that back out. So there's just a little, you know, like a, a spring and a ball detent in here. It's just click. And so that would be, I, I want to say choke because I'm thinking about a car, but it's not. It's fast idle. It's just more air, and that would be on and off. This knob right here is your idle speed, and um, in, a, in the other video, I'll explain how you adjust these and how you tune these and what happens when you do and how you um, increase the TPS setting, the throttle position setting, if you over-tune this. Maybe we need to do that in this video just, just for clarity. So... Um, that's what these two knobs are again. This is push in and pull out and you can see here on the cam Notice that's our stopper here for our fast uh, Well, that's our regular idle speed and that's our stopper and so when I release that pin then it it releases a little Pin here on the on the cam that you can't see that's buried down in there But then it stops it comes on and off its stop here and that's when it's in the full fast idle position and you can adjust this and notice how that gap goes away and I can turn this all the way out so that in effect I now I'm on the stop and there is effectively no fast idle and this knob will turn until it just quits so that's the full out and I'm off that completely and then when I start to crank this in you'll see at a certain point my gap begins to appear and then I can over gap this thing to now the bike could be running like at a very very fast idle until it goes to a stop again and so that's a very large gap and so you basically fine tune your fast idle speed wherever you think is uh, necessary to get you a nice warm up on your bike without over revving it so there's a there's no real spec well I'm, I say that but there probably is but this is more of just by personal preference of where you want your fast idle to be when you when you push in the knob and then when you pull it out that goes away and your, your gap is now set back to whatever idle, whatever you've set here to the idle screw, the idle knob, then the detent falls back, the stopper falls back to that spot. So you're really just manipulating that. And, and you can even experiment with this bike, um, with this on your bike. So when your bike is running, you could push that in and you'll, you'll notice that your bike will rev up. And then if you really wanted to exaggerate that, you could push it to the full extent and that's essentially just revving your bike right there like that all right so these are the, the two knobs the yellow and the red knob um, another thing over here you have is the manifold absolute pressure sensor this sensor is part of the fuel management system this is your TPS throttle position sensor down here on the bottom is your fuel injector the other video is going to go in and, and explain some of these parts in more detail that's your fuel injector right there. This is your throttle plate. That's your butterfly. Your carburetor bike has the exact same thing. And this is your throttle, um, um, the throat of the throttle body. 
and then over here is your fuel injector again and then this is the spray outlet and so this is on the downstream side so this would be towards the air filter this is towards the engine and so we're spraying fuel into the air as it passes over the throttle plate through it and then into the airstream as it's headed into the engine so there's kind of an overview on your throttle body and what all these components are this is the quick disconnect that goes to your fuel tank so what is this so we've got our meter here and then we've got a plug this is in series here this is coming off the bike throttle position sensor and we're interrupting that signal and we're picking up the voltage and we're going to read it on the meter and this is how we set the um, the throttle position value that the ecu is expecting now let's just address a myth out there and there's uh there's a lot of guys on uh, internet uh, mechanics who say that if you manipulate the value of the throttle position that your bike will run better or that you'll be able to fuel say like additional mods if you're going to pull out the reeds the intake reeds on your bike you're going to put an exhaust on it an end cap uh, say you're going to modify your exhaust system there are guys who will say that if you manipulate the value of the tps off of stock then that will increase fueling sufficient to accommodate all those mods and that's an absolute falsehood that's just a myth um, probably by guys who want to sell little devices like this so here we go sales pitch this is a little tps measurement tool and we make these and we sell these and so we have a product that we'd like you to buy from us if you needed to adjust your tps but by selling these we in no wise in no way promote the use of this device to manipulate the TPS as a method for tuning, fuel tuning your bike to accommodate those exhaust and intake mods, because it will not do that. We have experimented and we've done a bunch of tests where we'll, we'll change the value of the TPS and then we'll, um, with a wide band heated um, 18 millimeter O2 sensor, we will look at the fuel ratios of that bike throughout the throttle range and it does a, a fair enough job in the low throttle angles to add fuel to accommodate some of those mods. But as soon as you get to about one eighth, especially one quarter, all the way up to full on the throttle, the bike is lean, um, a scary lean. And so while it does a good job and there is a net result, guys will do this mod and then the bike will feel a little peppier and it'll idle a lot better. Well, effectively what you're doing when you change the throttle position sensor, you're effectively just doing this. You're just increasing the idle speed. And so I'll demonstrate that here on the meter in just a second. So I wanna make sure uh, that this is out and then looks like we've got everything plugged, plugged in correctly. Okay, so um, another thing too is there's guys out there who sell a device that will power. So this over here, this white lead is if you're gonna power uh, the, the throttle position sensor. What I have this set up with on this little harness is we're using the bike power. The bike is putting out five volts, the ECU is providing five volts to the throttle position sensor to power that. And the reference voltage is five. And so this is just a potentiometer. And so as the throttle changes position, the voltage return changes back. And the ECU sees that voltage difference, the variation between five and something else and then makes a determination of throttle position. And so it's a super simple circuit. So um, there is a device that, that a few guys will sell and it's, it just provides five volts on the white lead here on our little test harness. I am not um, for or against that. I have no problem with that. I personally, on every bike, just use the five volts coming from the bike as a reference voltage. And I, I don't have any of those little meters. I don't really advocate them. Uh, I've tuned or corrected dozens, dozens and dozens of TPSs and have always used a meter. And I once had one of those and it broke and I side by side the two and they were the same. So whether you have that or not, uh, I don't really care, but this is my method that I use every single time. Uh, and it's, it's uh, fail safe. So <clears throat> looking at the voltages here, right now this bike, this is a 2020 bike, and if you have one of the EXC 2020s, you know that these things have about three minutes of ECU on time when you hit the little start button. And so I'm gonna do that, and we're gonna get about three minutes here. Now I'm reading 0.67, 
and that's because I have I've screwed around with this. So 0.53 is stock value. So when you get a 2020 or really any of the EXCs, um, and that's an FE or an EXC, 0.53 is absolute bone stock TPS value. That's, that's what you'd be reading <clears throat> on a completely unmolested bike. And we've verified that value over many, many bikes. It's point, point, we've got 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, but you know the, the, the average here is 5.3. So when I press in the knob, the, the cold knob, the fast idle knob, that, oops, I already had it out. Okay, so I'm gonna press it in and I don't have it tuned. So typically, when you press it in, it runs up to about 6.5. So when I pull it out, it goes to 5.3. And then when I press it in, it goes to about, <clears throat> oh, my bike timed out. And press the button. Okay. So um, 6.4. Now, a lot of guys will say you should tune your TPS, you should hack, you should adjust your TPS up to about 6.4, 6.5 to get your bike to run better or to fuel these you know, aftermarket mods that these guys are doing. Basically, all they're saying is push in the fast idle knob and then run your bike. Like as if you're fueling your bike, your, your, your new FMF pipe, or your acro pipe or whatever, by just, a, a, for all intents and purposes, leaving the fast idle knob in. So when I pull that out, it goes to 5.3, and then it jumps up to 6.5. Um, and that difference, like the 10, 0 .10, 0 0.1 additional volts, is tricking the fuel table to give you a little more fuel. What it's doing is it's thinking, the ECU is thinking that you're adding a little more air than you really are, because when I press this uh, see, you can see the throttle plate. The throttle plate is really opening, and we're adding more air when we do that. But if I just manipulated the value, then the computer would think that I have that additional air and would add the additional fuel to accommodate that. And that is true, but it is not a tuning practice that will be effective through the whole throttle range. And your bike's just going to run lean. It just, it just is so. So again, just to debunk the myth that, that doing the TPS throttle hack will is a fueling tuning method it, it's completely not and no one reputable here's the thing none of the tuners that are out there that are creating maps creating um, value for um, you know the tuning community and the moto community uh, pushes that nobody um, i know that in forums and there's videos that talk about that but you're not seeing those um, suggestions from a lot of the guys that you know and respect so i would just caution you to do uh, all your due diligence on anything that you do and find two or three here's here's probably my suggestion find two or three guys that you respect and admire and know do good work and if two or three agree on a thing then there it is if there's just one person one internet warrior out there one keyboard mechanic who's pushing something um, and you can't find uh, one of these reputable shops or one of these reputable tuners that are also suggesting that, then there's, there's all the red flags you need. So let's talk about what we need to do to tune this. If somebody, let's say I bought this bike and somebody had done the TPS hack and I wanted to set it back to stock because I was going to put a Vortex on. That would be a real world scenario because the Vortex ECU is expecting and looking for this stock value out of the TPS on your bike for the specific um, vortex that you're adding to the bike. So on this particular machine, this 500 EXCF, a vortex would be looking for 5.3. And how do we get that if this has already been screwed up by some other owner? So let's say this bike came to us and it had 6.4 as the TPS value. I could also, maybe I should just demonstrate it this way. So I'm going to pull the knob out. We're going to go back to 5.3. And to adjust the TPS, you just loosen up these screws here. I've already I've already played around with this one. And so let's say that this guy had previously cranked this up to like 6.7, which is a pretty common setting on the TPS. And then if I hit this knob, it's going to go way up to almost 80. Okay, so let's pull that out. So 6.7 is a classic, you know, uh, adjustment where guys will tweak that out. So basically to set this back to 5.3, 
um, I'm just going to loosen those screws. And you notice as I move the TPS, as I physically move it, the potentiometer is just changing against the arm of the throttle plate, which is not moving. That, that's stationary. So all we're doing is we're moving the TPS, and that value is changing. So if I put this back down to 5.3... Five, you know, you're just kind of trying to get as close as you can. There's 5.3. Now, is 5.3 the exact number for your bike? Well, it may or may not be, and here's why. We have to set the idle to 1,800 to 1,900 RPM. And so if I change the idle speed, then the TPS value changes. So uh, 53 may or may not be 1,800 on your bike. There's all kinds of things that change where the idle speed might be, and that could be things like your air filter. Um, the type of air filter you use could change the idle speed, uh, the wear on your engine. There's just all kinds of variables that will affect that. So what, what I recommend is that you don't set this value to a number based on where the throttle knob or the, or the, the idle speed knob is influencing it. What I do when I set a bike to spec is I will turn the throttle knob, I'm watching the value here, so I'm gonna turn the knob out until the number stops. And that tells me that's the point where the throttle plate has gone completely and fully closed and no longer is the, is the rod of the, the idle knob touching the cam whatsoever. So look at that, so I've gone to 40 and, and no matter which way I turn this or no matter what I do to change that, the number doesn't change and I want to find that exact point. There it is. So that's the point where the number is now influenced by the knob. And I basically want to just find that stop point where the meter stops registering, and that should be 40. So to truly and completely set this, this throttle position to exact, say, the zero mark or the, the stock mark, then you do it exactly in this method. And I need to also triple verify that my idle knob, my fast idle knob, is also not influencing the number. And so I can turn that out, like I'm doing here, and the number stayed at 40. So that is exactly set. Now this, this is exactly set to factory spec. The knob is not influencing, and I'm reading 40. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this back up. I'm going to tighten these screws because I need to lock that number in. And so now at 40, that is set to spec. So if I turn this back up to 53, this bike should basically, ideally, start and run at the 53, 54, 52, 55, somewhere around there. And that number will change based on however I need to set my idle wherever the idle speed is. So if, a guy, if you read in a forum, a keyboard warrior will say, um, you'll ask a question, well, what value, what's the stock value? And he'll say 53, 52, 54, which is kind of accurate because most bikes, and again, air quotes, most, most bikes running at 18 or 1900 RPM come out to be about 53, but not always. And um, there's, there's variables. So that's not the true zero mark. 53 with the knob, with the, with the idle speed knob, influencing the number is not the true base number. The true base number for a true calibration is to pull that away like we just showed you. Pull that away and set the value at 40. And then whatever this ends up being so that your bike will run at 1800 is what it is. It, it could be 60. It could be 53. It, it could kind of be anywhere really, but, um, but it really needs to be set to fully closed. Okay, so just for the sake of this demonstration, let's run that back to 53. Let's say that this is now our bike will run at 1800 RPM. And now we want to set the fast idle. So how we do that is still with the meter here, you can turn this in until that number starts to change because now the rod is starting to touch the cam. And there it is. Okay, so that's the point where it, it starts to contact it and the number changes. And so that is basically where, that's the zero mark then for the fast idle, because when I press that in, that's going to jump it up. And that's, um, and again, personal preference is going to dictate how fast you want your bike to idle. 
But starting at that point, um, you can then change. So right now, you see how the number is changing. That would be the bike revving up. The higher the number, the faster the bike's gonna idle. The lower number, the lower the number gets, the, the slower that that fast idle is gonna be. And so if I pull the cam all the way out, click, it goes back down to that base number of 53. So you have to make sure that you set that TPS and your idle speed, and then you can go ahead and manipulate this. There's so many guys that will get themselves all bent out of shape, and there's a lot of um, screw-ups that you can do by having this yellow knob set to a point where it's influencing the cam, okay? So right now, we can see that there's an, we can see there's an influence, and then trying to set the idle speed. This is already now pushed off of the, the, the stop bracket. So I can't set the idle speed, because when I pull this, so let's say I turn this red knob in, to that stop point and I pull this out, my idle is still gonna be high. So there's just a lot of ways you can screw up your bike and setting your idle and your TPS by the yellow knob. So I would say this, if you're in doubt, if you've gotten yourself all you know upside down on this, I would say the first thing to do is take this yellow knob and turn it out till it stops. Just completely remove it out of the, out of the equation. Then do that procedure that we just talked about where you turn the red knob until it stops, the reading stops, the value stops. And that tells me now that, that this rod is completely physically off the cam. I'd set my TPS value there. And I could you know, run this up to 53 and start the bike and it'll probably start and run exactly at 1800 RPM. But what some guys will do as well, and this is valid, is you could just crank the bike and start turning this in until the bike, eventually it'll just fire, it'll run, and then you, with some kind of um, RPM tool, figure out where your RPM is, and then the value here will end up being whatever it is. That's not a set point. There's no book value for what TPS number you should have at 1800 or 1900 RPM. That's not the value. The value is cl fully closed butterfly, completely 100% closed plate at whatever value that ends up being. So that is a little tutorial on how to set correctly and properly calibrate your TPS um, when you want to set it back to spec. So um, again, there's this little TPS connector. Here's, here's a different version of this, but for older bikes, this is the particular one for the newer bikes. The new bikes all come with sort of a rounded style TPS plug, and then the old one come with sort of a round, um, they've got this shape right there. It's, it's two different ones for two different years of bikes. And we have this on the website. And, and if you've got any questions about tuning, tuning, your cal uh, tuning and calibrating your TPS, you can leave those in the comments. And it's, uh, that's everything you need to know about the setting the TPS. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Go out, get some adventure.